Great. Thank you very much uh, for your time and that introduction from Ryan as well. Uh, today, I'm just going to spend 15 minutes giving you an introduction to uh, the Global Listed Infrastructure Asset Class and the fund that we run at First Centia. Uh, I want to spend a bit of time going through some themes that have been relevant. Um, the recovery of the transport sector from COVID. We're going to talk about decarbonisation of the, uh, the uh, energy towards net zero and the implications that that has for infrastructure. And uh, then I want to look at a couple of stock examples quite quickly and then into some outlook comments, particularly around the rise of inflation uh, and where valuations sit in the infrastructure space at the moment. Okay. Uh, so the aim of the uh, First Centia Fund is to deliver inflation protected income and strong capital growth. Uh, what we invest in is stocks around the world uh, that own and operate infrastructure assets. Uh, think of a, a, around about half the fund invested in uh, things like utilities. Uh, they give us a good source of income and the ballast to the ship, if you like. Uh, and then the other half in more growth infrastructure. Uh, think of the, the roads and airports and railroads that have been impacted in the last year. Uh, but also some things that have done uh, really well, like uh, mobile towers uh, as we move towards 5G. Uh, it's an actively managed portfolio. Uh, got a big team of people based out of Sydney and uh, we do a lot of uh, uh, research um, all around the world on these companies. Uh, a real focus on quality in the portfolio. And at First Centia, um, as we've always had since I've run this fund in 2007, a focus on in investing responsibly, uh, which I think is critical for infrastructure assets. Things we look for, um, the assets themselves need to have high barriers to entry. Think of really capital intensive, hard to replicate assets. We're looking for growth that's more structural, uh, rather than you know, up and down with the, the commodity or the economic cycle. And this is really important, I think, in the coming years, the ability to pass through inflation, either through their regulation or their contracts, uh, that ability to increase prices at or above inflation uh, will be more and more valuable. But of course, we're not just buying the assets, we're buying the stocks. We've got to make sure that those stocks, those companies are run uh, sensibly, uh, good levels of leverage, um, management that are aligned with us as shareholders and that invest responsibly. Um, infrastructure assets by nature uh, are quite politically sensitive. Regulators can interfere from time to time. So running the assets for everybody, for the, the customer, uh, for the community, uh, you know, we think is important to manage risk. This is what a typical portfolio might look like. Um, that mixture we think is important, uh, having diversification across different sectors, uh, different countries, uh, different regulators, you know, allows us to manage risk in the portfolio. We put 40 to 50 stocks. Um, from time to time, we're gonna get those calls wrong. Uh, so making sure that we manage that overall risk in the portfolio uh, to preserve and ultimately grow capital, uh, we think is uh, very important. So let's pick up a couple of interesting themes uh, that we're seeing. Uh, first of all, uh, we can't ignore COVID and the impact that's had. It's uh, been you know, devastating in, in some parts of the, the infrastructure market in the last 12 months. Uh, think about the airports around the world. Uh, we've seen you know, more than a 95% drop in passenger travel at those airports. And uh, you know, in some cases, the stocks fell by half uh, because of that impact in the short term. Uh, travel on roads, on railroads, you know, also been quite impacted. Uh, but that is in the rear view mirror, as uh, you know, Ryan uh, noted, where to from here? Um, I think what's really important, and we've been heavily overweight uh, the toll road sector, we think that's uh, a sector that will bounce back uh, very quickly. 
uh, here, based in Sydney, so a little bit of bias here, but we've seen um, some toll roads recover very quickly. Uh, Chinese roads are now back above where they were pre-COVID. Uh, roads in Sydney where uh, thankfully we're COVID free in terms of community transmission. Uh, Brisbane similar, you know, traffic is back up to where it started. Um, uh, cities like Melbourne, um, you know, maybe more closer to home, uh, parts of France, you know, traffic has uh, recovered well, uh, but still down maybe 10 to 20 percent uh, from where it was. Uh, we're very optimistic that we're going to see a modal shift from public transport to private vehicles, uh, which will support uh, the toll road sector. And that recovery, while it's happened somewhat, is also ahead of us in terms of share price performance. Uh, airports was our biggest underweight position going into the crisis. I'd say that's a bit of good luck uh, as well as some skill. And uh, what we're anticipating there is a good recovery in short haul and domestic travel. And I'll come to that in a moment. Uh, but we think long haul and business travel is going to be quite challenged. One of the exciting sectors at the moment is the railroad sector. Uh, railroads, particularly in the US, have responded really well to the challenge. While volumes dropped in some cases 20, 25 uh, percent, the companies responded really well with their cost base. And now we're seeing very significant operating leverage where volumes have fully bounced back uh, to where they were pre-COVID, but they've kept their costs down. And as a result, we're seeing double digit uh, profitability. Uh, just over uh, in the last few uh, days, we've seen some takeover activity uh, as well with Canadian Pacific launch a takeover for uh, Kansas City Southern, and that M&A activity could give another boost and momentum uh, to the railroad sector. Decarbonisation and net zero, a uh, very topical theme. I won't spend a lot of time here, but I do want to point out that this can uh, be a positive change for utilities, uh, not just a negative around, say, some stranded assets like coal-fired power stations. The investment that needs to take place to rejuvenate uh, the utility sector uh, is, is massive. We've already seen very significant ground being made uh, in the UK and, and other parts of the world uh, with carbon emissions from electric power reducing significantly. But there's still a long way to go. And that investment in uh, wind farms, solar panels, battery storage, uh, hydrogen, electric vehicles, all of that investment is leading to earnings opportunities. And I'll get, explain that a little bit more going forward. But we think, and we're seeing evidence of this already, growth in the infrastructure sector, uh, utility sector can pick up from a traditional sort of 5% to perhaps 7%, and not just for this year or next year, uh, but looking out uh, a decade or two. Let's bring that to life with some stock examples. Here's our top, top 10 holdings. And I'm going to pick on two, uh, Next Era Energy, uh, uh, top holding, and uh, AENA, one of the airport operators, just to bring it to life. Next Era Energy um, is the world's largest investor and owner of renewables. Uh, they're the big uh, utility in Florida and building uh, wind farms, solar panels, battery storage all across the US. What's important through that investment, if you look at the, the bill that the customer is charged, we've seen a significant reduction in the fuel uh, cost. Uh, compare the cost of running a big coal-fired power station uh, to something uh, much lower cost like wind or solar. Uh, particularly as it relates to that fuel cost. So what they've been able to do is switch out the fuel cost for investment in assets. And that growth in the rate base is how a regulated utility generates earnings. More assets, a fair return on those assets gives you more earnings. And they've been able to deliver 8% compound growth in earnings over the last uh, you know, more than a decade. We think that that could continue for another 10, 15, 20 years because of the massive investment that is still ahead of us. AENA, um, 
in March and April, we had a, a wonderful opportunity to pick up some relatively cheap stocks. We built a position in AENA. It's the uh, operator of Spanish airports. Hopefully you've been through those and in the next six to 12 months have an opportunity to go through them again. Uh, but able to pick up at a significant discount uh, with the drop in traffic. And we feel that that recovery in traffic is going to happen in leisure, visiting friends and relatives, short haul, low cost carrier markets. They'll be the first markets to bounce back. Where to from here? Uh, one of the big themes of the moment is inflation and protecting your portfolio from inflationary pressures. Uh, we think more than 70% of the infrastructure asset class has the ability to pass through inflation pressure, uh, either because of the regulated nature of the business or the contracts they have in place. A great example here is our second largest holding, Transurban, an Australian-based toll road operator. Here are a few of my uh, both favourite things and biggest expenses, um, uh, beer, uh, uh, education and toll roads uh, here in Australia. And you can see through price increases year after year, uh, that ability not just to pass through inflation, but to exceed. And if we look at the infrastructure stocks performance over a number of decades, you get the smile effect um, and that is in, in periods of deflation, uh, infrastructure assets hold their own, their essential services. In periods of inflation, um, they can pass that through and over one, two or three years of actual inflation uh, start to generate uh, outperformance versus general equities. We've been through the toughest period uh, recently and as actual inflation comes through, infrastructure can start to hold its own. I also want to talk about valuations. Uh, infrastructure has lagged the broader market. Tech has been a much more exciting place to invest. Um, you know, general equities have been stimulated by uh, economic stimulus around the world. Uh, cyclicals have been on. Um, you know, things like infrastructure, a little more boring, have been left behind, uh, particularly some of that transport space. Valuations today uh, look very compelling as a result. Unlike the rest of the market, we're seeing PEs, uh, EV EBITDA multiples trading uh, below their long-term averages, uh, and certain sectors uh, looking you know, really fundamentally interesting. Uh, mobile towers, uh, we think toll roads on a normalised basis, um, and we think some of the growth we're seeing in the electric utilities because of that decarbonisation uh, is also quite exciting. Uh, so if you're looking for an alternative investment uh, that perhaps has had a more challenging period, looking to recycle some capital, um, I'd encourage you to have a look at the infrastructure sector um, and uh, First Centia Fund uh, in particular. Uh, I'm going to leave it there, but uh, thank you for your time. <music>